Hello, my name is Carlina Moeller and I'm the founder of Art Frankly. Welcome to Frank Fridays. I'd like to introduce to you my co-host, Ellie Hayworth, who founded Hayworth, an art consultancy committed to promoting intrepid ideas at the intersection of art and design. And today we're chatting with Tripoli Patterson, who founded his gallery on the east end of Long Island in 2005. Tripoli Gallery serves as a dynamic platform for artistic dialogues between local and international artists. We are excited to catch up with Tripoli. So Ellie, over to you to get this interview started. Great, thank you, Carlina. I'm really excited thank to start you. this chat today. Um, so Tripoli, can we start by maybe just going back to the beginning? Tell us a little bit about how you started your career in the arts. Um, yeah, that, I guess that makes a lot of sense. Go uh, start it <laughs> off where it all started off. Um, yeah, I don't really know because it wasn't something that was necessarily pushed on me. At the same time, my father was a pre-Columbian art dealer. Mm. Um, my mother grew up out here on, in Eastern Long Island, surrounded by artists and, um, you know, from, from going to the beach and being surrounded by nature and kind of having a pretty international upbringing, surfing and traveling and, uh, you know, not really, my mom would never really let us watch TV. You know, we had a TV for like movies or something, but she was always like kicking us outside and kind of letting us create our own games and our own um, mm -hmm. worlds, I suppose. And I think that's probably where it started. It kind of gave me an interest to these creative minds, um, a lot of which I, I'm, you know, lucky to be surrounded by now. I love that. Um, well, you certainly have an eponymous gallery. So at some point, the gallery materialized. And so I'm curious, maybe we can talk a little bit about at what juncture at one point you decided you wanted to actually create a gallery and, and you know, dedicate yourself to being a, you know, a representative for the arts. Um, well, I did my first art show, and this was before the Tripoli Gallery was born in 2005 when I was 20 years old. And I think it was, you know, it was mainly about, you know, being, being intrigued with bringing people together, you know, bringing a, a dynamic group of humans together, different ages, different, you know, women, guys, old, different races, different cultures, kind of being fascinated with, you know, with, with the, with what happens from birth to, you know, these individuals being created and, you know, bringing people together to, to, to engage in, you know, a conversation that doesn't naturally happen or something like that. But I did my first show when I was 20. I, um, you know, put four artists together. I didn't have a space at that time. So I, I worked, I did it at my friend Silas Martyr's gallery mm -hmm. in Bridgehampton, his family has a you know they my mom knew his father when when she was growing up out here and they have a big landscape um a business mm. martyr so he kind of had a beautiful barn on the property of where his family's uh, nursery was so that that ended up being my first kind of space to to curate an exhibition and you know really what what pushed off from there is it took a second for me to get paid <laughs> as a young 20 year old and I was like well I mean we brought like a thousand people came to the opening sales were happening Lola Schnabel was in the show wow uh Andre Bear Matoire was in the show John Ross Wrist was in the show and Tin Ojeda was in the show um and yeah I remember the kind of doing all the work and developing the ideas selecting the after selecting the artists selecting the works with each of them you know, designing the invitation, planning the, you know, what, you know, what goes into putting a show together, but it was fun because it was my first kind of show, not my first event, because I always like to put parties and collectives together. Um, but yeah, I remember after the kind of the opening and off, after I saw a lot of sales taking place, we kind of reconnected. I was like, okay, well, you know, how do I get my portion? Yeah. And so, you know, he kind of like told me the amount and I was like, okay, that seems less than all the sales, but he was telling me about the expenses and the invite and the food and everything else that, you know, cause he, you know, he put up all of those funds yeah. and then it took me a while to get paid to the point where I had to like chase him down and be like, yo, give me, I think it was like $500 or something. And 
after that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do another show next year. And this was the first Thanksgiving collective. So we're, okay. we're approaching the 17th annual this, this wow. month. Um, I was like, okay, I'll do another show, but I'm going to rent my own space and I'll, I'll yep. do it myself. And that was kind of the beginning of me acting as the gallerist on my own and without having partners besides the artists that I'm working with. Yeah, I love that. It's like learning the brass knuckle by actually yeah. doing it. Um, I think early in my career, I remember having a meeting with a, a colleague slash friend of mine who said, you know, my business is doing great. I just haven't quite figured out how to get paid yet. And I was like, well, isn't that just <laughs> like the woe of the art world? <laughs> yeah, I think, um, I'm, I, I think I'm still not on salary. <laughs> well, that's quite all right, because I imagine your uh, your artists are probably a priority among your among your, yes. your team. Yes, um, exactly. Exactly. So maybe you can speak a little bit, um, just having reviewed kind of your program, you speak a lot about this idea of creating dialogue and helping to kind of um, almost create like a concrete repertoire or create um, a milestone for these artists that you work with. So maybe you can speak a little bit about some of the artists you work with or how you go about curating the shows you do. Yeah, I really like, um, I really like seeing a body of work as kind of like a frozen moment in time yeah. and, you know, putting that on a beautiful platform and stage so it can be celebrated sort of internationally and by a wide range of people before it goes into a collection. Because I feel like, you know, I, I feel like artworks have a life of their own and they need, I don't know, they need to be kind of introduced to the world before they go back yeah. into a private collection. They come from the artist studio yeah. in a private moment and they're conceived in that private, you know, individual space. And then it's nice for them to have a public, you know, moment where kids can see them, where grown-ups can see them, where, you know, people from different cultures or people that speak different languages can see them. I really feel like art is, you know, it's a thing of communication. It's a thing of storytelling mm -hmm. and it, you know, it's not, it doesn't have as many limits as we have as, you know, how, how we've been kind of developed in this society. We have limits as far as, oh, you go to school, you go to school with that age, or you speak a language, you communicate with the people that speak that language, or, you know what I mean? So I feel like art, it has a greater ability, and it yeah. can kind of speak multiple languages. It can speak to multiple generations of things. Someone can be celebrating a work in, in, two, in 1910, and they can be celebrating it today as well, you know? So I think that's a real special part about art. So I want, yeah, I really like for it to be kind of honored and celebrated before it's placed. Yeah, yeah, no, I absolutely love that. Um, and I think that's a, an amazing kind of mandate to have as you as you continue to kind of build out your program. Um, yeah, I, and it's becoming that, exactly. Like, and I've, I've moved to a, a couple things that happened recently where, you know, and Instagram's interesting in that sense too, because sure. you know, art people get all of a sudden these artists have their own public sort of public, you know, platform. platform. So people can inquire about things. And you know, my artists will go the sales will go through the gallery, but still if it's acquired before we've decided about a show or you know, it's 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 a conversation that we're that I'm recently starting to make more of an important one, whether things get sold before they're shown or not. Yeah. Well, and I think maybe this is a great segue speaking about whether we want to call Instagram a geographic location or not. Uh, you are, you, you know, you've been on Long Island, you've been out east. That's, I guess, from my understanding of your, your genesis, born and raised. Um, I am not, as a non-New York resident, I am not super familiar with the art market out east. Maybe you can speak just a little bit more about this move from Southampton to Wainscott. Yeah, well, I, I was born in Sag Harbor, but I'm, I'm lucky to have a very international upbringing where okay. I lived in Bali for two years in, yeah. in the mid 90s. I lived in New Zealand in the early 2000s. I lived in Germany. That's very in, cool. I lived in Germany for two years in the 80s. Um, and I've been, you know, traveling extensively because I've been surfing semi professionally since I was like 12 years old yeah uh, but then I came back here and since I opened my gallery in Southampton in 2009 it's really kind of made me 
more more stuck not stuck out here but a, a, a new business is like a child and they're it's mm -hmm. not quite in so i can't kick them out of the house yet or let myself leave it's a house yet or something like that <laughs> sure um, but yeah the transition to wayne scott was you know kind of happened on its own um i was in i was on droves lane for 10 years i had a an angelic landlord um dagmar phillips she's she's now down in florida too yeah. um it was just such a she was almost like a partner more than a landlord and she was a very supportive person and she loved her she kind of saw my vision and saw what i was doing and saw what i was bringing to southampton and really really believed in it and yeah she was she was the reason why i stayed in that space for 10 yeah. years but there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of, mo uh, obviously as a gallerist, you have to be engaged on the business side as well as the emotional side, but there's a lot of emotional stuff that goes into these, these commitments that, you know, that you have with a landlord or, or whatever. And she was a huge, a huge part of that, but then she sold the building. So when she sold the building and I met, um, the new landlord who I did not get a good vibe from, I kind of realized 10 years was was the amount of time I needed to do there. Yeah. I was looking at my sh the last shows that I that I had done in that in that final year and I felt like I was ready for the next step and and then just kind of meeting this landlord and getting you know he I think the first thing he said to me or I know the first thing he said to me was do we have any problems? And I was like, "Oh, nice to meet you too." Uh, <laughs> no, we probably won't have any problems cuz I'll I'm probably leaving soon. <laughs> so yeah. I, you know, I ended up leaving. And yeah, again, it was the 10 years. I had some really great shows that last year. The last exhibition I did was titled Night, which was kind okay. of kind of interesting because it's like good like good night or, or like in the, an ending phase. Yeah. And I I get I take a lot of guidance from the shows that I do. And I take a lot of guidance from the artists that I work with. And um yeah. so yeah it kind of just it, it kind of just made sense so I left the space before I knew where I was going my house is located in Wayne Scott so I kind of brought all of my belongings and everything to my house and I just made a made an internal um decision that I wasn't gonna feel anxious about finding a new space even though it was mm -hmm. very nerve-wracking you know, nerve wracking as far as like, you know, maybe losing my business or you sure. know, maybe the end of Triple E Gallery if I don't, because a gallery without a space, in my opinion, even though, you know, I could have become an art, art advisor or something like that. Sure. It, it wasn't my, you know, my thing was this physical, physical space. Yeah. So, but I'd made that decision. I kind of brought everything to my house. I told myself that the right space would come. Um, you know, and trying to not overthink things because I think often we get in our own way. Yeah. Um, so then I had my, I didn't have a gallery for a year and little, next thing you know, I find, I see this warehouse out of the office that I, you know, one of my guest rooms, I turn into my office out of the window. I see this warehouse being built. I'm like, what the hell is that? And I called the number my landlord used to stretch canvases for William de Kooning, which was very synchronistic to me. Yeah, yeah. Because Lisa de Kooning was my godmother and she helped me open my gallery in Southampton. Oh, and amazing. Yeah, so I, I met him. He's a local guy. He told me that story. He built, he had this land for 18 years, built a commercial space because that was the biggest building that zoning wise that enables him to build the biggest building on this kind of, you know, somewhat small property. And yeah, we went into a long lease agreement and he was kind of thrilled because he was all, he was a, an aspiring photographer in his teenage okay. year when he was working with the Kooning. And then he became a contractor, which happens often to people that grow up out here. You, you know, you, you, you find a trade that will support your lifestyle. There's like, um, in the Hamptons, as you can imagine, the trades that take care of the homes is a big one or build the homes or, you know, manicure the escaping, but yeah, whatever. So mm -hmm. he kind of went that route, you know, 50 years later, I meet him and he meets me and, you know, now he's, he's, he's a visitor to my gallery often. 
we're talking about doing a coffee table book because he's all these incredible photos of de Kooning. Um, and yeah, it just made it made it made perfect sense. And I understood that if your intentions are right, the universe usually provides. Yeah, that's really that's really incredible. Well, it sounds like you have an exciting chapter ahead or many chapters ahead. Um, so Kimberly, maybe you can speak a little bit. You mentioned, I think, that either before this conversation or as we were talking, um, we're on our, what, 17th annual Thanksgiving show. So maybe you can speak a little bit about what everybody's can, you know, come to see from the, from the Thanksgiving show. Yeah, no, I can. And hopefully it'll help me figure it out because I'm still kind of, I'm still <laughs> it's working the on the, <laughs> yeah, I'm still working on the text for this one. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned, the first show I ever did when I was 20 was a Thanksgiving show. Yeah. And I also like to make a point of letting people know that that's in November. So it's I'm, I'm not a seasonal business out here. I never have been. And yeah, I, 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 like, I like supporting businesses out here that are open year round, too. Yeah. Um, because there's schools out here year round and there's kids that are growing up year round. And yeah, it's important that we're we're catering and. Um, thinking about everyone in the community, not just people that come out here in the summer. Of course. But the Thanksgiving shows, that, yeah, like 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 I was saying before, they kind of threw a lot of my shows and through the artist, I, I learn about life. Um, and the thing, this this Thanksgiving show kind of always comes because it's a show that's very personal to me because it started at the beginning of the gallery, so it's become kind of a reflection show and maybe a, a narrative, a narration, or it has a narrative aspect of its own, okay. where it's kind of talking about the, the past and the future of the gallery, maybe, mm -hmm. and maybe myself, and maybe even the, you know, species as a whole. The first show that I did in this building was the 15th annual Thanksgiving Collective. Okay. And the 14th annual Thanksgiving Collective was when I didn't have a gallery for the first time. So that was the first show I did at my house right down the road without any artwork. I just, I turned it into a potluck. I, I invited, love that. Yeah, I invited the artist to talk about the work. And, and it was a conscious thing for myself to understand that art takes place without the objects too. You know what I mean? There's um, and 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 my ability to bring to bring the artists in front of the people, you know, like my my close connection with all the artists I have is they're you know, they're very comfortable with me. So I'm so if I invite them into my home, which is my sacred and most personal space I have, you know, they're they're kind of willing to open up to an extent. And then the collectors or the audience that came I let I you know I thought it would be really really fun to let them see kind of behind the object and let them see where where, where the object starts from or you know what I mean so it was, yeah so it became a potluck I invited a few artists I kind of started a conversation I it was all about the communicating with the viewers and the artists without the objects so that was the first show and then this space kind of immaculately happened. I signed the lease, I think November 18th. And the opening was November 25th. Oh, I wow. decided I decided to put 50 artists in that first Thanksgiving in the first Thanksgiving collective I did here, here in this yeah. space, which was the 15th annual. And I titled it What Have We Done? And it was slightly talking about myself like how the fuck am I gonna pull excuse my language how am I gonna pull this off how am yeah. I gonna do a show with 50 artists in this space that had no walls um, yeah it was a little tongue-in-cheek yeah yeah it was a little self-referential yeah and then I find out that all the art pieces that I was getting were kind of about the end of the world one oh. piece was by uh Jennifer Cross who was my art teacher at the raw school okay and and it was titled Every Hundred Years the World Changes. Another work was was by Alice Aycock, and that was titled um, Something Armageddon. Oh. And yeah. then I had uh, I had the ship rock paintings by Alexis Rockman that was all these right. kind of yeah, a sh all these shipwrecks. And I love it. Was it. Like Alexis kind of these Rockman. Yeah, and that that's and I didn't like 
deliberately do that. It was just what everyone's conscious, where all these artists' conscious minds were. And then it led into the wildfires in Australia. Of course. And it led into all of this kind of crazy chaotic stuff. Then it led into the pandemic. So the following Thanksgiving collective I did was called Are We There Yet? And that yeah. was, you know, I toned it back a little bit. It wasn't 50 artists. It was like, 10. it's always a group show, but the 50 was a sure. little bit of, of a push. Um, and it was like, are we there yet? Because it didn't feel like, it didn't feel like we were at a, like we'd arrived. I mean, we couldn't yeah. leave our homes. Everyone was being told to wear masks. It was like, yeah. what the hell happened? And, you know, so that was kind of another interesting year. And now we're at the third that I've done in this building. And this year it's titled Arrival. I love it. So it's coming full circle. Yeah, because because we, we are here. Yeah. And whether we like it or not, um, you yeah. know, we we have arrived. And I'm trying to, you know, as I grow up and as, you know, we get through this, you know, challenging time, I'm trying to understand that regardless of what's going on around us we have a internal ability and we have a conscious you know mind that we need to put put first and realize that nothing on the outside is going to get better until things on the inside get better. yeah yeah and i think it, it underscores like a sense of presence as well um and maybe yeah. kind of forcing that that kind of temporal yes moment. exactly well, exactly. And now, and now with you saying that, I'm going to add that in the press release. But it is, <laughs> Am I going to be quoted a, in the press release? <laughs> yeah, it is about this, 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 you know, delicate time of time of now, you know? Yeah, I love that. Well, that's really exciting. So we'll definitely make sure that uh, the Art Frankly kind of community is apprised to all of the, uh, the developments about the Thanksgiving show, which is pretty imminent. So it's exciting to see it come to fruition. Um, so, Tripoli, we have maybe one or two last questions. We love to end with professional practice questions. So I'm curious, is there one um, kind of one word of advice that you would offer about just out of your career for an aspiring new kind of arts professional? What is one word of advice you'd give? Never forget your, your um, instinct. Yeah. And don't second guess your instinct. And I think... You know, we're taught a lot of stuff in this world, but there's some things that we're not taught and that's that's instinct. And that's coming from a place that, you know, you never want to second guess that. You always want to believe because it goes so far back. Yeah. I think our, our instinct goes so much further back than like the colonials arriving in America or the development of the, you know, it, it could maybe go back to like the beginning of mankind and our instincts and our, you know, gut feeling yeah, you can't just run on that, obviously, but but don't don't mute it and don't forget about it because, you know, no matter what happens, that's that's something that that's our own, and I think it's a very it's a very important uh, source of guidance. And like, you know, we know when things feel good and we know when things don't yeah. feel good, and let's let's not forget about those feelings. Yeah, no, I think that's a that's certainly a great word of advice. Um, and as we round out at kind of the end of the year, forward looking at 2022, is there a professional milestone or some moment that you're looking forward to particularly? Yeah, maybe getting on payroll. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> no, just, no um, we'll have to follow up a year from now <laughs> and see where we stand. <laughs> no, I think, yeah, I think it's, I think it's, it's, um, maybe taking some of the advice that I sometimes give and, yeah. you know, realizing that we've done, we've done a lot of work and we deserve, you know, we deserve to have our dreams and our, you know, our visions of the future come to fruition. We, uh, I think we all deserve it. And I think we're all, you know, everything that we're, we all have our struggles and we all have our, you know, the family things, but, yeah, I just want to kind of reprogram my mind a little bit to to let go of the struggle thing and um, yeah. Yeah. not all, like I feel like I'm constantly like people are, you know, telling or praising me for my success. And I'll be like, no, 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 I'm not that success, you know, or like, 
And I'm like, what am I doing? That's so crazy of me. And and maybe it's like an insecure thing. Maybe it's things from childhood. But yeah, I think my next, yeah. my next, my next little point of evolution is just, um, yeah, yeah, feeling that deservingness and you know, and and accepting it. And I yeah, and, and just having faith that that it's all here and we do deserve great things and we all we all have been putting a really good energy out and um yeah just to to believe in our dreams and and watch them come to life i love that well i definitely think that's a great place to conclude because i think we all want that to be our our kind of mantra going into 2022 um so this has just been a really a really rewarding conversation it's been fun meeting you so thank you for taking the time today no problem. And before you go, can I give you guys a quick run through of the gallery? Yes, please do. Not, not everyone gets to see the back room, so ignore this. But this <laughs> is a this is a show by Lauren West. And she's an artist from Mississippi. This is her first ever solo show. And she lives and works in Brooklyn. Oh my gosh. And she's an artist that we're, you know, we're now working exclusively together. So it's very exciting. They're and beautiful. I think she's a genius. This is a self portrait. Oh, they're incredible. No, and I just, I love the like intimacy of the canvases or, or rather, are they on wood? Are they on panel? No, they're on, they're on canvas. Oh, these I ones see. are on wood. Those two are on canvases. And then these are, these are works on paper, pen on arches. Too. And I'll just try to go quickly so I don't, Way so sure. much. No, but you have a really special space here as well. Yeah, I feel, I mean, I couldn't, even if, if I had a blank slate and I was to draw something up, I don't yeah. even know if I would have done it this good. They're really, really quite compelling. The horse is chasing the carrot. Yeah, that's a metaphor and, I talk about often. The, yeah, the like carrot. The, yeah, like the puppies chasing the rabbit, but if they ever catch it, they'll they probably kill the dogs. That's amazing, and you, the eyes are so telling. <laughs> yeah, this was the invite piece. It's really cool. But there's like so much information. Of course, I go to the boob first. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. We won't fault you for it. <laughs> and then she always has this devil and I see angel that kind and of inter interlock, which I think is is important for us to realize that good and evil kind of coexist probably. So these, these, oh, this, this, this chicken I have to show you. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's like a knowing chicken. Yeah, and there's such a character in it. Like you a know? side eye, yeah. Yeah, like, and nature is so advanced and so smart. They're really special and truly, I mean, you've hung the show really compellingly. It's just, it's very interesting. Oh, uh, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm in heaven with the show. It's up for two more weeks and yeah, it's been received incredibly well. And yeah, it's, it's like, I, I, I like doing shows out here this time of year because they're, yeah, it's a, they're, they're, they're just as important as the summer shows. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Okay, so that's good. basically it. Thank you. I appreciate this. We don't often get to do a walkthrough at the end of these Frank Fridays, so I'm excited that we got to do this. No, my my absolute pleasure. I got to take advantage of this space because I'm 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 blessed to be here. Yeah, it's really it's really great. Well, this was a lot of fun. So thank you again for taking the time. My pleasure. I'll talk to you guys soon. Sounds good. Bye bye. Bye.